me being a, a real street guy, it was two people that changed sports. Yeah. Iverson in basketball and Edge in football. She played for people like me. When you go out and do your thing, it's the best. So when I seen Edge on TV, it made me like, that's me. People call me the Edge. You look at Edger and James, and he says the ad people have told him if he changed his hairstyle, if he got his gold teeth cap, that he could make $5 million a year as an ad spokesman. He said, it's too hard being someone else. I'm me, I'm staying me. I probably left millions of dollars on the table, but I was cool with that. I never set out to be popular. When you have to be this goody two shoes or you can't really be who you are, that's boring to me. Hey, they I think in that sense, he was almost like a trendsetter. He was one of the first athletes that said, hey, this is who I am, like it or not. I don't like to do something for nothing, you know, and it's, I'm not a volunteer football player. True perception reality, right? Like, perception is this guy stays out late and parties all night. Reality is he's not drinking, and, like, he can lift weights at 3 in the morning. That's when he's kind of up. But you kind of had to get to know him to kind of learn that. Right about that. Yeah, dog. They possibly could have had the wrong impression. But if you know him, if you talk to him for five minutes, you know, Edge gets along with everyone. Easy, Jesus, baby. I remember when I was a freshman at the University of Miami, that didn't go too well. But my first day in the league, it was the same Edge that I met in 1997 that was still leader of a team as a, as a young puppy, and he was still that workhorse. They wrote you. They wrote you. He was still that dude that was smart as hell. Everybody respected him. It was just like I was back in Miami. It was from the U to the horseshoe, baby. <laughs> I'm playing a different game from other people. They don't understand I always stuck to my purpose. Here comes the blitz. It's by Bellamy, and he got a hand on James, who spins away. Edger and James again led the NFL in rushing in 2000 and entered his third season as arguably the league's best back. I was off to my best season. I prepared for that. I would be at the University of Miami in that 100 degrees weather training for those seasons. I just led the league two years in a row. I got a better relationship with Peyton as far as understanding what he's thinking. Man, the game was a, really a joke. It was like, I'm like, this is too easy. I really felt untouchable. James on the toss. Nedrin James is down. Watch his left leg. The defender had me, my knee just went back. And from then it was like, bam. You know, I was devastated. You know how hard a guy works every single offseason. I hated it. Just a bullet in the heart of the franchise, because Edgerman was the heartbeat, you know, and everyone knew that. There's no way that I'm not going to continue killing this game, but it gave me another challenge. Instead of rehabbing with the Colts, Edge headed back home to Immokalee, Florida. This right here is what I called the fun house, you know, in 2001 when I got hurt. You know, I had to find somewhere to rehab, so I bought these two buildings. This one I made a weight room, and this was just a hangout for kids. Any kid could come there. You know, I was going to gyms, and the gym would close at a certain time. I found my best workouts came in the middle of the night. So I would come up here in this area. I would see anybody out there that's um, hanging out. You know, I don't know if they're going for bad or not, but. I would recruit them and I would have them come in and help spot me. It was an ACL injury, and, you know, that was a dreaded injury back then. So everybody's saying, you can't come back. So I took it upon myself to make it a challenge. There were some differences in opinions on what the doctors and what Edgerin wanted to do. I mean, I didn't worry about it because I knew who he was. I knew he wasn't sitting on the couch. Once again, Edgerin just kind of did things a little different way, but it didn't mean it was the wrong way. It was the right way for him, which it was good with him, it was good with me. And then I got a chance to actually be around the kids, too. I would have the kids come here, they can come hang out. All the kids in the neighborhood came after school, came during the summer. He let them meet NFL players that they would have never met in their life. These are little kids that was never leaving that block, let alone that town. And EJ knew it. He was running for Mark Lee, and he was running for his family. He knew that God put him on his earth, not to drop him off right there. The 2001 Colts finished 6-10 and 10 and missed the playoffs for the only time in the Manning-James-Harrison era. Oh, it's new. The next year, they hired Tony Dungy, 
and James returned to the team. Edgerin absolutely ran over Ray Mickin and it continued on. For the next three seasons, James averaged over 1,400 yards rushing per year. You got like 120 or something like that already. Down to the mountain. Good running. Good running. We considered ourselves a very elite passing team that if you played man to man, we could beat you. But you don't get man to man unless you got a great running back. The fake is to Edrin. He's going to throw it at Reggie Touchdown. Manning takes the snap, gives it to Edrin up the middle, breaks it to the outside. He's at the five. He's, He's still driving. Touchdown, Edrin James. It really kind of started, you know, with Edgerin in, in his presence back there. They are simply all focused on stopping the run. Boom, we have this one-on-one -on -one outside. The safety is up there, then they want to pass the ball. Touchdown, Manning to Harrison. I really think Edgerin took a lot of pride in that. In 04 and 05, he did everything. That's what was special to me about him. Yes, 1,500 yards, yes, all these catches, all these touchdowns. But that attitude of whatever it takes for us to win, I'm going to do it. The Colts won 48 regular season games in the four years after James returned from injury. But each season ended in disappointment. sentiment was that no one could stop the Colts. Well, someone just did. <sighs> it was always the New England Patriots. They just had our number. Hands off to James coming up the middle, and he is swallowed up and thrown down for no gain. The Patriots hold this offensive juggernaut to three points. We're knocking on the door, and we're doing something right. Uh, we got to figure out how to do it a little bit better. It should have been, you know, in the big dance, at least. One of those, I'll tell you what, 2005, to me, was the best team that I played on in Indianapolis. I mean, we had it all. They give us Edron right up the middle. Edron dies, touchdown! Touchdown, Edron James! You know, we just uh, fell a little short. Kick is on its way. That kick is long enough, high enough, and it's no, it's no good! That was kind of like how the story always ended when we had Edge. That's the beauty of the game of football. You know, you can work as hard as you want to work. It's going to happen when it happens. So you have to just continue to work. 